visit an event which is called a hackathon. The first <laughs> flying safe to Munich. So if you don't know Munich, you might know Munich from this. Or this. Okay, so next is the car rental. I'm not sure where that is, but wait a minute. It's pretty dark here. Today, the hackathon is going to start in a place called Agnes Pokolsbo... Agnes Pokolsbogen. Agnes... yeah. Agnes Pokolsbogen. But first, have a good breakfast. Hi, good morning. Morning. Hi, my room number is 560. 560, thank you, enjoy yes. breakfast. Alright, thank you. Okay, I just had my breakfast. Um, going quickly to the hotel room, going upstairs, get my stuff. And the good thing actually is that it's a snowing a little bit outside at this hackathon event. Okay. For Aero's defense and space, this event is very, very important. The reason why it's important because you know our PMR industry is changing so dramatically. It's changing actually with light speed. As we migrate from narrowband to broadband, that opens a lot and a ton of opportunities. And a hackathon is not something you do overnight. It's something you really plan well in advance. Not weeks in advance, not months in advance, but it's part of the strategy of the company. We call this the critical app challenge because what is going to be developed here is a critical application that can be used by Airbus Defense and Space on top of the Tactilon the Bad Radio. The Bad Radio. communication application. Now I see that Anna Corpola is available right now, so and that's Anna. Hi. <laughs> yeah, we are actually the matchmaker who brings these hackers together w with our customers. This time it's Airbus. So big corporations, usually from quite traditional industries, big big companies, they need help to be to become more lean, more innovative, kind of more getting faster and opening up to external developers, getting new ideas from outside. What is a hacker actually? Well, yeah, exactly. Hacker. What is a hacker? <laughs> yeah, don't don't get it too neg in a too negative way. We mean hackers. We mean by people who participate in these hackathons. So that it comes from there. So there are people from external companies who are kind of boosting the work done inside these giants, big corporations. So that's why them, why we call them hackers. So one of the teams is called Qvic, and they're developing at the moment, and they're really very working very very hard right now. Um, just taking a peek here. Just take it just to serve you for a few seconds, okay? Guys, how are you doing? Is, is, is there any progress? 
much, bro. You already worked for this for many for for a longer time, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so things are in sync. So, uh, what music are you listening to? Uh, ball beat. Ball beat. Is that hard hard hardcore style or? Nah, it's melodic it's rock. <laughs> it helps when developing an app, right? Yeah, yeah. I just see it about radio laying here. Now it doesn't make any sense putting an app on a radio that crashes with a drop test. Now at Critical Communications Mina, back in Dubai, you can see the video over here. Uh, I asked for a drop test of the Dabat. It wasn't a production model at that time. This one is much better. So we're gonna take a look how this device behaves doing a drop test. Okay, so, <laughs> so I think, I think, <laughs> should be possible Don't kill to yourself, do a bro. drop test a little bit higher, <laughs> just like this height, right? I, okay, let's let's take a look here. One. Go. All right. So, okay. is the screen still working? There's no SIM card. Okay, I know. There's no SIM card. <laughs> it's still working. The battery is still there. It's still attached. No scratches on the screen. Perfect. So that was the drop test. And as I said, a drop test is very important, especially with the debat radio. And the debat radio is really something Airbus is focusing on. Um, it's a water test <laughs> right now. I'm not sure, it, it's kind of deep into the water, so I need to... I made a little mistake, Airbus Defense and Space, I'm sorry about that. So going to... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Thank you so much. Oops. Everything is working perfectly fine. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> thank you. I'm just wondering what the uh, the next test will be. I need to think about it a little bit. If, if we compare from what they started in this competition and now, have they done something more or is this mostly been they've about been able to, uh, they've what they've been able to run their apps on the, on the bat already. Okay. So this is a good, uh, good starting point. So, uh, um, we just had a management meeting just to understand how is the progress of all of these teams this afternoon working again tonight they're gonna have a dinner here at the same location then they go back to the hotel I'm going not for dinner over here by the way I could just see a two euro coin laying here so that's mine um, it's already getting a little bit clearer right now, and uh, but it's nice weather actually. This is Germany, this is Bayern, this is minus one degrees, this is... Cheers. So the critical act challenge is really very, very important for Airbus Defense and Space. That's probably going to be confirmed by Eric Davalo. Eric will be visiting this event later on. The most important item for the whole critical act challenge is the Dabat radio. If you look at all of the developments, it's the most important radio that Airbus Defense and Space has produced ever. I'm upstairs again in about five minutes. The jury is gonna value all of the apps here. I think nobody's here yet. No. This is the jury room. About nine people are really looking into the fact how important that app is that creates the value for Airbus Defense and Space. It's empty right now. Uh, it will be filled up with people in about five minutes time. Thank you for letting us the, the chance to come here and talk about these things and present maybe our idea on how to use on the tactical device. The chatbot 
with voice recognition capabilities. How was that? You kicked off. <laughs> that was... Were you guys nervous? Uh, Let's say well, I want to say no. <laughs> <laughs> How did it go? Um, uh, well, I, I thought it went really well. Yes? You know, yeah. We came to a conclusion. All right, look forward to hearing that. <laughs> well, this is a beginning, and it's uh, not only about the winners, because all the ideas were extremely good, so it was difficult to select the right one. And we will continue with a smart twist to have a partnership, discussion, and building those application together. So it's really a start for us. And this is a very important in our industry, don't you think so? Because we had this migration from uh, analog to digital. We had the migration now from digital to digital, but from bro narrowband to broadband. And it opens a ton of opportunities, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, even today we have launched this few, mon few months ago, and when you look at the amount of ideas and application compared to what we had on our Tetra device in the past, which because of the bandwidth were quite limited, there is nothing comparable. And we see, I mean, we are discussing about artificial intelligence, data analytics, all this stuff that we can bring now. So it's really uh, extremely enthusiastic. So I, I, I think you guys are enthusiastic, but the developers are enthusiastic too. I spoke with a few of them, and they really love to develop more things for the public safety industry and for public transport and so on. Yeah, so it's a good match. Exactly, and we think that in our industry, people are passionate. I mean, people who are working for public safety, critical communications are all passionate people. And we can see that giving those guys the opportunity to be part of those building solutions for these customers, they are getting passionate as well. And we're just at the beginning, as you said. Yeah, exactly. It's our future, yeah. We're looking forward to see much more of all of these developments. And um, for now, I think this is a good moment to close the vlog. Oh yeah, I just want to say to you, everybody wants to say goodbye. <laughs>